I'm gonna continue trying to solve, I think, the, the issue I was having with trying to connect to Web3. I had a problem yesterday when I was running the other script, getting the blocks. I got a, an error, then I stopped running. So I think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna run the other one until I fix this issue. And I spent a little, uh, two days ago, I think around three hours trying to solve this and I couldn't find a way. I tried to clean the cache and do other stuff, but it didn't work. And I'm not really sure what's happening, but I think it has to do with the sessions in the request library and URL lib tree library as well. Because when you do this, when you create an instance of this, it creates a session and then stores the session somehow, somewhere. And I tried to, even tried to clean the cookies on the on all browsers and it didn't work. So ultimately, if nothing that I do works for solving this, I'm going to have to probably create a different app for every time I do something, which is really annoying. And also some of the questions I saw other people had about this. People say it could be the proxy on the computer, but I don't understand. If that's the case, I don't understand how it's possible if on the other script the thing works. So yeah, I don't know what's going on. And I might just not spend a bunch of time trying to solve this if I can't. I'm just gonna try to study the animations stuff on the canvas. And I didn't do much yesterday, to be honest. I got massive headache and it's, I think it's because I'm working too hard. And so then I, I just worked a little bit and just watched the videos the whole day. But I did some, some of the physics course that I was doing. I went through, I think I'm a little bit more halfway there. But I might have to come back and pay and listen to this stuff that I already seen because I didn't wasn't paying too much attention to some of the classes, some of the lessons. But at least I have some formulas now on the physics module. But I think I so far, uh, I don't think I'm gonna use a bunch of them. I have derivatives and integrals, a lot of types, uh, different types of them, but specifically to what I'm trying to do. I think I'm going to have to get other formulas. So probably at the end of the course, he's going to talk about uh, electromagnetic field and some stuff about quantum mechanics it should be good to see how he translates the formulas from mathematics to a computer. But yeah, even then, I think I'm going to have to research other formulas online to put it because yeah. I'm not sure if he's going to talk about volume and pressure and these kinds of things. But it's all related, so. So I think I went from that one to this one. I was looking at this stuff on cache session here. And then I don't understand how this is stored. That's the problem. It generates this cache key and then stores on this session cache, but yeah, this is just to translate into binary, I think. I remember looking into this formula. A dip. Biggest problem is that I'm not really sure if that's the the issue. 
Yeah, I was looking at this here. LRU. It stands for least reuse, uh, something like that. Cash. That should do with the cash, but I don't, I don't remember really well. Yeah, so this was the stuff that I was looking at, I think, how to remove the cache in Python. There are many ways to achieve fast and responsive applications. Caching is one approach to that, when used correctly, it makes things much faster while decreasing the load on computer resources. Python's functus module comes with the LRU cached equator, which gives you the ability to cache the results of your functions using the least recently used strategy. This is a simple, powerful technique that you can use to leverage the power of caching in your code. This tutorial will learn what caching strategies that are available and how to implement them using Python decorators, what the LRU ca strategy is and how it works, how to improve performance, in performance by caching with the LRU cache decorator, how to expand the functionality of the LRU cache decorator and make it inspire after a specific time. I even try, I think, to erase this on another script, but it, it doesn't seem to work because I think it's only relevant to the the context you are running at the time. And I think this stuff it has to be something that stays on the the computer in a file somewhere to get this problem. I think another alternative is to just ask on random discords about this problem. See if anyone has went through this. Oh, this is the issue here. Addresses, addresses. Oh, it's because I'm running from the, the roots. Every time, I wonder how this works actually, because every time I change IDE, depending on where I'm running the file from, I get this mistake here, which is so maybe I don't know where should I put the file, should I make the file paths usually? Wonder if someone talks about this somewhere. I think it makes more sense to design everything to run from the the root directory. But then when you're trying to just run scripts to see if it works, it's a pain. Because on PyCharm it runs from the file location and not from the root directory. What is this standard they are including file paths in Python? And I don't know what's happening with Stack Overflow because now it seems to be on the old format, but these days it has been changing every time I, I Get into it. Though it's a snippet of code I'm trying to use to take a directory path, as maybe it's because it was April Fools, but I'm not sure. If code I'm trying to use to take the a directory path, sorry, boots. So, what else path exists? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to find the dancer to this. As usually putting the absolute path doesn't work for some reason. 
So maybe you should try this. Just like that. OS path, apps path. I can also try to see if I can get GitHub Copilot to give me a suggestion that might work. Yeah, this is the file that I created. Should try to solve this. Oops. That's so crazy. It just gives uh, suggestions. I guess the way that it does this is by getting all the data from repositories and then probably some other people coded this on their projects and then it gives you the all this this stuff. But here I don't think it's gonna work. It, it seems like it got stuck on the on this. Yeah, sometimes it gets stuck and it starts suggesting the same stuff. And then you gotta wait and see if it's gonna do something else. Yeah, it doesn't come up with anything. I'm just gonna erase this. So the problem is exception connection, connection pool, local host, state for five forty five, max retries. Caused by new correct new connection error. The problem is this target machine. It has to be my local host. It doesn't make sense to be, but it, it could be the server on the HTTP server, on the RPC server that I'm trying to connect to. That's the thing I'm not 100% sure about. Because if it, it is on their server, then there's nothing you can do to change it and maybe they designed this way so people can't open several different programs from the same IP address in their API but it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to stop people from running programs at different times Because then you're only limited to using it in one project. Doesn't make a lot of sense. And maybe I should be using PyCharm now. Since I'm not running the other stuff on PyCharm. And it's much better to program Python and PyCharm, in my opinion.
proxy pool. So it might be this stuff. As far as I understand now, the proxy is the stuff that connects my computer with the the API to mask the IP address, I think. So it might be stored on this the proxy and that's the problem. Maybe I can try to connect into a different parts as well. That might be an idea. This looks interesting as well to investigate. I have two pages on the same thing. The problem is if I'm passing the RPC endpoint. Why is giving me local host in the mistake there? On the stack stack trace.
Yeah, the thing is, when you're pressing localhost, I think it is used when you're creating your own node. And then you're setting up your own node for the HTTP to be on whatever part you design to be. But the issue here is that they don't talk about connecting to the RPC providers. And I already tried to do this one, it doesn't work. I'm gonna try again. I have to understand what is this. You should create only the HTTP provider per Python process, only one. What does that mean? Uh, I assume it means that you should create one instance for each project, let's say. For each time you're running, you can't run two scripts at once. That's what, what it means. But... I also think that that's the, the core of the issue here because it pro it's probably creating this underlying connection in underneath. And when whenever I created the first one and now I can't create any other one because it assumes that I already have the connection. Uh, somewhere else, and then it hits max retries. The issue is that I don't know how to. I want to erase that every time I run because I don't want to be uh, stuck there.
I'm gonna use a spy charm, I think, after I run this. It's much better. And it's already opened on the the project. And I'm gonna same mistake here. So what if I try to change the, the part here? Yeah, that's the problem, because now it runs from the... Yeah, but this, I'm going to have to erase this, because it's running from the file, not the root directory. Oh, that's a run from the command line, which is possible as well. Oh, it worked. So I'm still getting this error, even changing this. That's the thing. Huh. So it can't be Yeah, I think the the provider connects automatically with the port 8545. So the problem can't be on the port itself, I think. It has to be in this proxy thing. Because I'm not even connecting to them now, and still giving me the same mistake. So it's a problem with this, the library itself, the connections I have there. And not with the provider. So the question is, how does these connections work? Because the weird thing is I can still open live server and do other things, obviously. So this particular case is giving me the problem, but everyone else, everywhere else, it works fine.
so it has to be with a proxy, I think. Yeah, I tried this one, but it doesn't work. Yeah, that's the problem, I think. I think it created more than 10 connection pools. But then why would... I think the reason probably why it works on the other instances is that I'm using the same connection. But when I try to run this script, it's trying to create another one. Might be that. The problem. But the thing they don't explain is if I run this on one file, does it work globally for all the other files? Maybe I should investigate the source code again. It's gonna clean this, uh, close the, the other stuff. That's the mistake here. It might be with Windows configurations as well. The issue. Because uh, a lot of times when they update something, it fucks up a bunch of things. I hate this uh, thing on Windows, they force you to update. It's so stupid. 
Yeah, so here, well, it runs, but then if I run here, it's probably gonna give me the mistake again. And the issue is I don't know if it's running, if this works globally, probably not. Or if it's another thing that is causing this issue. It's saying the machine ref refused it, so it might be the operational system, and it might have too many connections. So maybe I should search for how to close HTTP connections on Windows 10. You know, the stack overflow might help as well. I think I'll stop streaming soon and then I'll come back later because I have to do some stuff. Then I'll probably spend a lot, of, a lot more time trying to solve this later. Let me do something here, see if it works. Oh, actually, I'm gonna comment this out, leave the other one there. I'm gonna open in the same local host that I'm using, I'm trying on the other file. We should print proxy as well. So it runs fine. What if I try to make a request here? Just saying proxy manager. I don't know why I didn't think about this before. Requests. Not get Ah, uh, there we go. Huh. Ninety five forty five. Hmm. Another thing I can try to do is open the live server 
see what parts is open it opens on and i wonder if i can see i think it's gonna be the same parts that's the thing on the first script it's gonna be on the same part as, as this one because it's automatically using this one as default whenever you connect with the http provider from webtree so the problem has to be on the amount of connections i have in the computer it must be the problem i think and it's probably with this proxy stuff so i have to figure out how to clean the, the proxy and how to stop using so many or increase the size of the pool for each one maybe we can use this proxy dot request and then get So it's going to be the same thing, essentially. But then I'm going to make this one. Yeah, the thing is, I don't want to get from Google. And the problem is, I don't want to find a solution that I have to do this all, all the time. I want to find a solution that fixes the underlying problem so I can just do the same commands that I was doing before without having to worry about because then over every time that I want to do this I'm going to have to research again or remember what I did it's not good so let's see if I put just with this get here if it works Yeah, it doesn't work. So this, I assume, changes the communication from your computer to the server by changing the by allowing you to change the parts or the the proxy that you're using. That's the purpose of this.
Maybe you should search for how to handle, how to manage open pools with the, the th this thing. We, the only issue is, does this work for all of them? Probably not. That's the problem. Connection pool. If I try to do this. connection pool. Oh, I need to pass an object. Oh no, that's the the class, not the methods. Yeah, this is something from Python 2, I think. It's not necessary, it's just to say that it is a class or something like that. Yeah, I remember seeing something about this that it was necessary to do on Python 2, but not Python 3, because Python 3 does automatically. But I'm not really sure uh, what it is, I don't remember really well. Yeah, so I imagine I can't do this for any... I have to pass the instance. That's the issue. Yeah, it's expecting a connection pool, or not. If I pass this, it doesn't work. So what if I pass this? And then I pass the, the local host to that. And then I do the other stuff. I copy this, control Z. I'm gonna put this here. Okay, 
Let's see. So it runs, but did it close the thing? I'm gonna know that. I'll try to run here, see if it works. I suspect it doesn't. Uh, what I'm going to do is stop here and then I'll come back later today just solve this I think I'm on the right track at least I understand now a little bit more I think so uh, maybe I'm wrong but I think the direction that I have to go is try to see how to disconnect or how to manage these proxies on Windows with the library, because that's probably the issue. And I did this, and when I did this, there was a bunch of different connections. This looks like an interesting thing to do. I'm probably gonna do off stream so I don't leak IP addresses. Hmm, so I can just do this maybe. And we can put the the parts I have there, and then the the only issue with this is that I'm gonna have to do this every time that I I need. Maybe I can I can start this somewhere, and if it works, the process, and then I can easily look it up if I forget. Yeah, so I'm gonna close now. I'm gonna look at this stuff off stream, and I'm probably I'm gonna come back later in around two hours, I think, to solve this, and then work on animations. And yeah, after I solve this, then I'll be able to also explore this stuff. 
different stuff that I wanted to do of getting information, but I think I'm gonna work more on the animation stuff and the basic addresses. I'm gonna use the addresses that I already have from the blocks and see if I can extract information from them and then work on doing some animation stuff. Then later on, I figure out, I will start working on how to get information from the other decentralized exchanges. So see ya. See ya then.